Angel Has Fallen is the third entry in Gerard Butler's Fallen Action Trilogy, starting with Olympus Has Fallen, then London Has Fallen, and now Angel Has Fallen. Rick Roman War directs, who is probably best known for the Dwayne Johnson action film Snitch. Now I'll admit prior to seeing Angel Has Fallen, I hadn't seen any of the previous films. I remember the debacle when Olympus Has Fallen was first coming out, as Roland Emmerich had a similar theme film coming out at the same time, called White House Down with Channing Tatum, which I'll admit I thought was a pretty fun popcorn film, and as a result I chose to watch that instead of Olympus Has Fallen, which had a similar plot. So I was curious how I'd be going into this trilogy, having not seen the others. And the good thing is the movie is pretty easy going to newcomers, being more or less its own thing. Although I'd say if you're a fan of these films and you've been following the movies since Olympus Has Fallen, then you'll absolutely get the most out of Angel Has Fallen, particularly with the progression of the relationship between Gerard Butler's Mike Banning and Morgan Freeman's President Trumbull. Angel Has Fallen follows Mike Banning as he is framed for an assassination attempt on the President's life. He must run from the law, hoping to clear his name while attempting to find the real threat. It's not an entirely original premise, but these movies aren't known for being original. Many people called out the first film for just being a diehard clone, so why not look to the fugitive for inspiration for the third outing? Taken 3 had a man on the run plot, and so did John Wick 3. Now while Angel Has Fallen is certainly nowhere near the level of John Wick, or especially the fugitive, I can happily say that it's a far better action film than Taken 3, with some genuinely exciting and well staged action scenes. Aside from some editing at the start of the film that gave me Olivier Megaton flashbacks, the action for the most part is quite enjoyable, with each action sequence offering something fun and different. From an explosive drone attack to a chase with a semi, there's a lot of variety to the action, and you can usually see what's happening despite some overly fast editing and parts. Don't expect anything gloriously stylized like John Wick, but I was happy to see the use of practical pyrotechnics and stunts, which worked incredibly well in the movie's best action scenes, especially in one standout sequence with Nick Nolte's movie stealing character, that I thought was absolutely the highlight of the film. The third act is pretty entertaining as well, consisting mostly of gunfire and explosions. Thing is, it's the only part of the film that relies a bit too heavily on CGI, with some poor green screen work and some very noticeable CGI inserts of helicopters and gunfire. Aside from that, the action remains fast paced throughout the movie, where you're kept invested in what's happening thanks to a committed performance from Gerard Butler. It's not the greatest performance in the world, but Gerard Butler seems at ease in the Mike Banning role. He doesn't have to overact or do any of the stunts that Keanu Reeves does in John Wick. He can film his bits of action and drama, then move on without breaking a hip. That all being said, the story and dialogue really aren't that great, often falling to your usual action movie cliches, with some twists that most people are going to get pretty early on. Morgan Freeman spends most of the film in a hospital bed, so he doesn't really have too much to do. The standout of the film really is Nick Nolte, as his character just brings this rush of energy and fun to the movie. Angel Has Fallen tries to harken back to your classic 90s action films. However, the movie often takes itself too seriously to really fit in with those types of films. If Angel Has Fallen had leaned more into the cheesy nature of those types of films, as we get once in the movie with the hilariously entertaining action sequence that Nick Nolte is in, then I think that would have done the film a lot of favours. Otherwise, the tone of the film is kept pretty serious, which makes Angel Has Fallen admittedly a bit boring at times. The film is padded out with a lot of generic action movie dialogue and throwaway lines, although there are some attempts to add social commentary with servicemen having health problems, drone tech, and even scandals involving the Russian government. If the action was spread out across the film a little better, then I think the film overall would have been a little more engaging, as the pacing and structure of the film usually falls down to big action sequence, lots of talking, another big action sequence, then more talking. What makes a movie like John Wick interesting is there's plenty of action peppered throughout, mixed with purposely over the top and cheesy dialogue, which is what makes those movies a lot of fun. Here not so much, I found myself wanting to just get onto the next action scene pretty quickly. Angel Has Fallen can be a lot of fun if you're in the right mood for it, and of course if you're already familiar with these films, then you'll know what to expect. This is absolutely a film that's worth seeing on a Sunday afternoon, where you've had a few beers with some friends, and you want something that's easily digestible and fun to watch. This is a comfort food action film. Angel Has Fallen is completely serviceable, with some better than expected action scenes, but there's absolutely no rush to go out and see it, especially if you're like me and you haven't seen any of the other films. Oh, and if you do see it, there's a post credit scene that comes completely out of left field, and has almost nothing to do with the film, but it is downright hilarious. Angel Has Fallen gets a 6 out of 10 from me. Guys, I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your monofix. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.